Welcome to episode 36 of Experience Any Wines Live. And today we're going to talk about uh, a phrase I heard last week on a YouTube video. It was the eight phrases to live your life. I love taking in that content. And one of the phrases they said, it's not one day, it's day one. And when you have that mindset, you'll start shifting and and changing the way you interpret every day we get on this planet. That's what we're going to be talking about today. First, we're going to get into gratitude. Every week, I start things off with gratitude because as humans, and myself included, I have a negative bias, a negative comparison, which kept me alive and kept us alive as a species for 100,000 years. And yet, it does not always serve us. So it's important that we start to look into the world with a positive mindset, positive comparison, look for things that make our lives great. And I've been doing this exercise for months now here on the show and in life in general, seeking out the good stuff in the military in mass resiliency training, we call it hunt the good stuff, right? At the end of the day, when you put your head down, what are three things that went right today and how do you get more of them and what can you do about it? And so I, I understand the power of optimism. And as I've done it, I've all of a sudden started to see the good things in my life versus negative comparison, right? It's we talk about a red car, you're going to go and see red cars. And so when I focus on what am I grateful for, I start to see things that I'm more grateful for that were always there. And now I start to see them. Today's moment of gratitude is probably one of the simplest ones I've ever had. On Friday, I picked up my daughter for I've, my daughter is 10 years old. She turned 10 last month. And for the last eight and a half years, I've been making anywhere from a seven hour one way or what's well, our seven hour round trip to a four hour well, round trip commute to pick her up because she lived in Peoria. Now she lives in Indianapolis. And so Friday afternoon, I drove six hours round trip to pick up my daughter for this week of the summer. And over the weekend, we celebrated her 10th birthday party yesterday. And as a parent, I often uh, wonder, I don't know, am I doing this right? What are the decisions we're making? Right at a Pokemon themed birthday party and kind of ran the same play I do every year. Here's a list of people. We're going to get the cake. We're going to get the decorations. And, and then people show up and then we roll the dice to see how it turns out. And it, we, we had a great day yesterday. And I know we had a great day yesterday because at the end of the night, last night, we had a birthday party. Then I spent some great time with my daughter one-on-one. We played volleyball and football in the backyard. And then we had dinner and we snuggled up and we watched a movie. And at the end of the night, I was talking to her in bed and she said, today was my favorite day, the best day I've ever had in my life. And that moment, I was grateful for her in my life. When I came back home from Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, I had spent a year working with detainees. And I'd spent 12, 13 years at that point in the military, years of construction, years work in the waste industry, a lot of places that hardened me. And she has absolutely softened me and allowed me to see all the good things in the world and allowed me to see how important it is to be strong and yet soft. And last night, my heart absolutely melted when she told me that because from her perspective, everything was right. And whereas a parent, I, I often question myself, I have doubt, I have fear that I'm going to screw this thing up in that moment. And yesterday, I know I won. So I am grateful to have an amazing, beautiful, healthy, adjusted 10-year-old daughter and that she has the wherewithal to teach me and to propel me forward. When we look at the people in our lives, they're either pushing you where you want to go or pull you back from where you've been. And from the day she was born, she's been pushing me to where I want to go, whether she knows it or not. So I'm grateful for that. Second order of business, the business part of business now, one of the reasons why I do this show. I'm, I, I do this show every week to express myself, my ideas, push myself creatively. And between my book and now um, doing speaking, right, that's the ultimate goal for me is to get in front of people and, and speak. And now that the book is getting traction, I've really honed in on my new workshop, The Language of Leadership, and I'm starting to get paid gigs. So I'm looking yet this year and into next year, if people that are looking for conference speakers, for workshops, as people are starting to do their annual planning for next year, have them reach out to me. Talk about what we can do really for the leaders within your organization. What language are they using that's limiting their ability to grow themselves, grow their team, and also grow the relationships outside of work and looking to get more speaking gigs on the books yet this year and in the next year, because that is really why I was put on this earth. My why is to be so authentic with myself that others feel the need to be themselves. And I, my, my mission now is to change the world one word at a time. So let's get into today's content. Today is all about, today is day one. Not one day, it's day one. And when you have that mindset, what power does that give you? I know for me, as I was preparing for this show today, knowing, okay, that's what I'm gonna cover. What's one thing I've put off for a long time that could be 
day one of the rest of my life. Could be one day one of the next great adventure. Jordan Peterson talks about always about the, the adventure of life, right? This is our adventure, right? Forget heaven or hell or the afterlife. This is what we got, right? Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. What are you going to do today? And so one thing I've been putting off and now I'm putting myself on notice, right? I talk about my BHAG, my big, hairy, audacious goal. It's three things. It is to build a sustainable speaking career. It's to join the stage, join Jordan Peterson on the stage, and it's to be on the Joe Rogan podcast. Those are the three things that I say, okay, that's the mountain, right? That's the, the highest peak in this range that I'm going after. And one thing I haven't done is I haven't sent Joe Rogan a copy of my book or Jordan Peterson for that matter. I thought about it. I Googled it. I got the PO box number and I haven't taken my happy ass downstairs to grab a book, put it in the envelope, slap an address on it and go to the post office. I haven't. I have not done that yet. So I have not taken a step to get me closer to that thing that I so greatly desire, that thing that I say is the most important thing. And I've yet to take one of the many steps I can take. So that's what I'm going to do today, right? I'm going to pull the addresses. I'm going to ship out a couple of books, right? Worst case scenario, it gets lost in the mail 10 minutes after I drop it off, right? That's worst case scenario, never gets there, right? And I'm out 10 bucks. Cost of a book, envelope, and 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 postage, right? I'm out 10 bucks and 10 minutes of my time. And yet I've, I've yet to do that. I'm sitting here saying this to you like, all right, dummy, why haven't you done that yet? And then I think about why I haven't thought that. Well, I've, the doubt that creeps in. I have this idea. The business isn't right. What happens, right? What happens when when my, blo- my book starts flying on the shelf? What happens when I start getting the speaking gigs? What happens when I get on Joe Rogan podcast, right? What happens when? Okay, then, yeah, I'm going to have to build a fortify fortify my build my business so my business is sustainable. It's like, okay, we'll do that. It's better to be prepared for an opportunity and never get one than it is to not be prepared and have one come across your desk. Les Brown talks about that at length, and many other motivational speakers have. And Les Brown, that's my guy. That's my jam. He's the first person in the room. Yep, that's the guy. And, and so I've let this, okay, what? Okay, I get on Joe Rogan and, and my b- book blows up and then I'm going to be touring the, the world speaking and I'm never going to have time to run on my business. It's okay, let's go after that, right? I've, I've given myself these reasons why I haven't done it yet or oh, I need a little bit more material or I need more episodes or I, no, fuck that. Take that first step. Fail early, fail often, right? Fail. First attempt in learning. That's it. Last week, two weeks ago, whatever, I talked about the plateau people versus the mountain people. Right. We have an episode coming up here in a couple, maybe next week or the following, where we're going to talk about your battle cry. Right? What do you say when the chips are down? I, I sit here every week for 36 some odd weeks talking about doing the fucking thing, and yet I'm sitting back here with this mindset that, oh, yeah, one day I'll get to it. Yep, yeah. When the things line up, I'll do it. Like, okay, the timing's not right. I struggle with all these things, and that's one of the things I want to let everybody else here know is when I get on my pulpit and I stand here and I bang my fist and I say, this is the way you got to live your life. And this is the righteous way. And I'm on the, the mountain of right. I'm speaking to me as much as I'm speaking to you. I often walk in the world afraid of my own shadow. I walk in the world with this wounded inner child that says, I'm not good enough. I haven't done the work. I haven't put in the effort. I haven't earned it yet. That I carry that with me every day, right? That's the wolf inside of me that is weak. And occasionally I feed that wolf. Occasionally, I give that wolf some credit for the work that is he's been doing, right? The devil, if you want to use the devil and angel analogy, I use the two wolves analogy. And yet, when I feed that wolf of abundance and, okay, I did write the book. I did put the work in. I am getting paid speaking gigs. I have people. Last week on Thursday, I went to a networking event. And I was driving there and I get there. And of course, I have to look at my email to figure out who the hell I even know there. Just figure out, am I at the right networking event? And I walk up. Of course, I see someone right there. I was like, oh, yeah, that guy, Chad, Innovative Science. Yep, I know him. Got it. Good. Sit down. I'm talking. And I start doing, do, do, just get into it. And by, by a little bit, I'm starting to do, do some coaching and some language coaching because this woman is struggling with the work-life balance, as she called them. She's got the career. She's got the two kids. She's got the mortgage. She's got the husband. She's got the vacation. How do you do it all? And I sit there and I start coaching. I'm like, oh, give me your problems because I, I have a hero complex. I want to save the world. And that's a, that, that is a very beautiful thing. I did reflection enough to know I have it. I'm aware of the fact that I have it. And now how do I regulate in real time where I don't get sucked into all her bullshit necessarily. And yet I can still give her a starting point. And so we came up with some stuff. I gave her the book. I said, Hey, read this section. Oh, you're busy. Busy is bullshit. She goes, I hate the word busy. Good. Read this section. Double down. She's like the integrator of my company would love you. I was like, cool. Here's a copy. What's his name? All right. Bob, Bill, whatever it was. All right, here you go. Give it to him. Okay. The next day she sends me a message, finds me on LinkedIn. She goes, you really should have a podcast. I loved 
what we how you just dissected that yesterday. And I go, okay, there it is. Okay, like a little vindication, right? So now I can go and say, okay, next time I have this self-doubt, because there's going to be another time, right? I struggle with it, as we all struggle with something, right? Next time I'm convinced I'm not good enough. Let me remember that moment in time when I was fucking great. That moment in time when I walked into another networking event and I had all the things. I'm walking in, it's a bunch of professionals. I'm walking in with my camel pants and my t-shirt. It's outside at a beer garden. I do not drink, right? I'm drinking my decaf coffee. It's generally blue collar or a white collar individuals. I'm blue collar as they come. And I have all this down. Yeah, you know what? I fucking showed up. I followed my own damn advice. I did the fucking thing. I told the world who the fuck I was. I've been apprehensive to tell people I'm an author. I, I want to uh, uh, under-promise and over-produce. I have that mindset, right? A little bit of scarcity mindset, right? Tell people a little bit and then wow them. Well, fuck that. It, it's day one. Wow them. Tell them what you're going to fucking do, right? Tell the fucking world. Then show the fuck up. Set the bar fucking high for me. I was about to say for you, but no, this is about me. Set the bar fucking high for me and then hold myself to that standard. Because every time... I choose not to do that. I'm feeding that wolf of doubt and fear. I'm feeding that wounded inner child that has convinced himself he's not good enough. One of the things that I talked about with this woman during it, she kept saying, you, she goes, you know how it is. I go, no, I don't know how it is. I don't have a husband and two kids. And she joked, right? She goes, you should try it sometime. I don't want a husband, right? They sound hideous. And I go, no, I have two kids and a career. I said, I ain't got no fucking job. I haven't had a job in eight years. I have a career. I have work. I don't have a fucking job. There's a mindset different. And so one of the things that I worked on with her was you versus I language. And once she started saying I, then she started disqualifying. I don't actually feel that way. I can handle these two things. Okay. Let's stop projecting the ideals that you've built in your fucking head. And same with me. I sit here and say, you need to do this. You need to do this. And yet I also need to do that. I need to take that first step because it's day one of the rest of my life. I need to do whatever is possible right in this moment to get and chase down and, and get that BHAG. Go after it. Worst case is I'm no better off than I was yesterday. Worst case. And yet I know I'm going to be better off because I'll say, okay, I did the thing. I checked it off the list. What's next? What's the next avenue of approach? So long as I have this thing, I can do, I can give myself an excuse saying, oh yeah, I, I, when I, I, that's my next step. Once I do that, then I'll come up with the next step or the next course of action. And yet it's right in front of me. In the OODA loop, I talk about them in my book, right? Observe, orient, decide, act. It's all very obvious to me. I, I observe the world. I, I, I consider that to be a strength of mine. I orient myself. Okay, what data, what information is most important, right? I decide and where I fail is to act often. And then this is the same situation here, right? That's where I go to die. Some people screw it up, observe, right? They don't even show up to the world. They don't even know what's going on around them or orient. They don't, they struggle to understand what are the best questions? What information matters? Who matters? Whose perspective should I listen to? Or do I need to, right? Should is a shit word. Whose perspective do I need to listen to, right? What decisions are to be made and then acting them out? Some people skip, right? They skip over the Orient and the decide, and they just they start acting, and you're like, oh, you're acting a fool, right? Because you ain't acting right because you didn't make a good decision based off of good information, based off of observing the world around you. Okay. Or if I've seen other people, they get to the decision making, they make a decision, and then they go back to observe and orient because they second guess themselves and they start asking the people around them for validation, even though they know good and what the right decision is. Me, my challenge as I'm saying this out loud to you, my audience, and whoever's listening, whoever will listen in the future, because this movement will live on in perpetuity on the great internet waves. I know my struggle is the decision make. Okay, I'm gonna make the decision. I got Joe Rogan's uh, address. It's a PO box in Austin. I got it. I decided. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna send him a book. And then I solved the riddle. I saw the solved the equation, and then I stopped. I did not act. And so for me, this is my opportunity, and I want you to take away from this episode. Be that introspective person, right? The first step, often I've heard this in the past. People say, oh, awareness is the first step. Nope, that's bullshit. Mathematically impossible to be aware when you don't do your self-reflection first. Reflection, ladies and gentlemen, that's the first step. Do the reflection first. Put the work in, meditation, yoga, thinking when you're driving out loud or thinking when you're driving all alone, right? You got to do the reflection. I do my best reflection when I'm on the road. 
when I go pick up my daughter, sometimes the ride is 90 minutes down. Sometimes it's two or three hours. I often do the drive quietly by myself. And I use that my time to reflect. So this is the key, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, if you're going to do something this week, I'm going to take you, tell you to shift down and do some reflection this week. So you become aware. What are the things that are strengths that serve you? What are your strengths that do not serve you? And now you're aware. And then from there, self-regulation. So for me, I know I get bored very simply, right? When things come naturally, I get bored. So it's, oh, Joe Rogan, of course I want to put a book in the mail. Why wouldn't I? All right, good stuff. It's been a year. My book's been out for a year. And I haven't taken the 10 minutes and $10 to reinvest my life or reinvest into my own life. And so take this week, use this as your opportunity to shift down, be reflective of what you've done. If you've come with me or when you've come with me for the last 36 weeks on this journey called Experience Any Wines Live, it's a lot about do the fucking thing, right? This is what you need to do. These are how you set your goals. This is how you achieve. I'm asking you, I'm imploring you this week, take the time to look back at all the work you've done in your life. Look back at the last six days, the last six months, the last six years. Look back, go back to a time where it all started, where you can recall how did you operate? Look for patterns of behavior. Look for, did you show up the way you wanted to show up? Become so aware of your, become so reflective and then true in your awareness. Not what other people say about you. It's self-reflection. It's self-awareness. You can ask for feedback from others. If you ask for feedback from 100 people, they all say the same thing and you don't agree, that's not your own awareness, right? If I walk in a room with 100 people, 99% of them are going to say I'm obnoxious. I am me. I'm not obnoxious. You're easily offended. I'll push back. You can be, others can be offended. Doesn't mean I'm offensive necessarily, right? Do the self-reflection, become self-aware. And then next week, we're going to talk about your battle cries. And once you get that, what battle cry do you need to tell yourself to get from that self-aware to self-regulate? So in real time, you can adapt and adjust to the world around you. Because today, ladies and gentlemen, like every day, is day one. Do the fucking thing. Tell the fucking world. Show the fuck up. And we'll see you next week.